Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Khadija Taylor, and I am a sophomore studying political science here at SUNY Oswego. During my time at Oswego, I have managed to become a resident assistant and treasurer of the Muslim Student Association. With the knowledge and experience that I gained from this institution, I see myself advocating for justice, promoting education, and nurturing self-growth. Our session... <clears throat> Our session today is continuing week four of a five week program focused on giving students and the class of 2020 the chance to explore career paths, find jobs slash internship opportunities, network with alumni and more. Check out the website linked in the chat for more details about this week's sessions. And don't forget, if you complete three items on the week four checklist, you will be eligible for the drawing at the end of the week. The direct link to the checklist on the Imagine 2021 website is also in the chat. And now I am so excited to introduce you to our amazing guest speakers. With us today, we have Scott Millslabel, a relationship manager from Handshake, Val Mata, a co-owner of CareerShift, and Sarah Viner, a success manager for LinkedIn. We are extremely thankful that you three could be here with us today to share knowledge and insight with our attendees. As we move along today throughout the session, please feel free to use the Q&A feature to ask questions and keep an eye on the chat for links and other helpful information. We have a lot of content to cover today, so we are going to jump right in. To start us off, I am now going to turn it over to Scott so he can talk with us about Handshake and how students can utilize the platform to most effectively search for positions best related to their career goals. Thank you. Hi, Khadija. Uh, thanks so much for that introduction. And um, I'm incredibly impressed that you pronounced my last name correctly without having to be told so. That literally never happens, very impressive. Um, just one quick thing, Christine, did you want me to just talk about my role now and then we're going to come back to talking about Handshake or should I just dive right in? Uh, you can go ahead and introduce yourself, yourself a little bit um, and talk about the platform and then we'll have Val and Sarah kind of talk about their role once they once we kind of hand it over to them. Okay, perfect. So my name is Scott and I'm a relationship manager at Handshake. I work with SUNY Oswego and about 130 other schools on Handshake. Uh, predominantly with the career services offices and I help with really a plethora of things from like pulling reports on handshake to any issues that come up with employers and sometimes uh, different issues that come up with students. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you about how you can best search for jobs on handshake and um, how to really s prepare yourself to stand out to employers. So I'm going to share my screen here and we're gonna go through uh, a couple different things uh, in terms of setting up your profile and how you actually search for jobs. Um, just as a heads up, I will provide this deck to Christine afterwards so that she can share it out to whoever is interested. There's a bunch of links in here that if you just click on them, will take you to like blog posts or a specific area of your handshake profile to uh, adjust. So don't, don't feel like you have to catch everything the first time. Uh, okay, so uh, just like a qu very quick agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about getting hired, how you can get discovered, how you can connect, and then like um, how you put it all together, really. So uh, getting hired, Handshake has hundreds of thousands of employers and hundreds of thousands of jobs on our app. Um, we have 100% of the Fortune 500 company, and then we have like hundreds of thousands of smaller employers, so there's something for everybody. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know this, but I think it's always worth a little bit of a refresher. Uh, we have jobs and internships for every career path you could go down um, everywhere, every state and just about every city. Um, one thing you're gonna notice today is kind of a trend is that I'm gonna be talking a lot about completing your profile. Uh, and this really is the reason why. Students who complete their profile are 80% more likely to be contacted by an employer and five times more likely to be uh, or for an employer to reach out to them. Um, and then there's more than 25,000 student searches that happens um, on Handshake. So it's very important to keep your profile up to date. 
Um, we've got opportunities all year round. It's not this. It's not the type of website where it's seasonal in that you know there's certain companies who only hire at certain times. You can really find a job or an internship at any time. Um, this is what I was talking about a moment ago in terms of having links to click on. This link here is going to talk to you just about like really commonly asked questions. I'm not going to go into this now because it's probably not the best use of our time, but I do want to show you the Handshake blog because this is like a Trevor tro treasure trove of information. There is so much information here around how you can get hired, how you can be best prepared, how you can show up in virtual career fairs. There's something here for everybody. Um, I highly encourage you to check this out. I have also linked off to a couple like specific articles further down in my, in my deck here that we can look at. Uh, so let's keep going. Uh, okay. So in just a second here, I'm going to jump into my demo account and we're going to, I'm going to show you how you can actually like search for and save different jobs and different internships. Um, oops, I'll need to fix that. But basically there are several great ways to search for jobs. So um, we can start in my demo account here. This is probably, you see something similar to this when you log into Handshake. This is my demo account. It's all fake information and fake data. So um, there is some limited functionality, but it'll help us get the point across. So if, say for example, you wanna search for a job or an internship, you can come in here to jobs and it's gonna bring you to this page where all of uh, our jobs and internships are listed in, in, in particular, the ones that are approved at SUNY Oswego. So, um, it's really important to pay attention to these filters in the search bar up here at the top because this is where you're going to be doing most of your action. Um, I really recommend opening up the all filters section so that you can quickly uh, grab filters that like interest your job search. So if you're looking for something that's full time um, and it's paid only and you know like, oh, I'm looking for a software developer role um, and the industry I'm looking for is... Let's just see if we can populate this really quick. Consulting. Um, you could search by like specific employers that you know about or you can leave it blank. Same thing with majors. Um, this major or, or match all major, match all employer preferences is something that's pretty important and relates to completing your profile, which we're still gonna talk about. Um, basically, if you match an employer's preferences, you can filter on this. So you'll get all the employers that you're like a great match for right away. Um, you can filter on work authorization. And then it's really great because you can actually filter on specific labels that your career services department has set up for you. Um, I'll show you what this is like from Christine's uh, student account in just a moment here. And then if I were to hit, oh, I put too many filters on for how limited the jobs are in my, um, account here. So let's try now. Okay, so now we got this one job here. Obviously, as I mentioned, this is a demo account, so there's not many jobs in here. Um, you can check out this role, you can bookmark it, you can see, you know, a brief description, you can see what documents they're looking for. Um, and this is where you can tell how good of a match you are for an employer. Um, you can see here, I meet the GPA requirement this school has set, but I don't meet the school year and I don't meet the majors they're looking for. I mean, that doesn't automatically exclude you, but it's gonna make it a lot harder for you to like appear ready for that job to that employer. Um, we're gonna talk more in a minute about how to make sure you have all of that set up correctly. So now, um, say for example, you really like this type of job but you don't necessarily want this one and you want to just keep your eye peeled for what's about to come, check out this don't miss out banner here. And then you're going to want to hit save your search because what it does is it creates an automatic job alert so that anytime a job that meets that those criteria that you just selected is now coming onto Handshake, you'll get a, either an email or a notification within the app that tells you like, hey, a job you're interested in has just been published to Handshake. Um, if you click on this edit your notifications anytime thing here, you can really like adjust the title of the search. So maybe you would call this like software jobs or something. Um, and then how you can decide how 
uh, regularly, you want to receive an update. So you can do it daily or weekly, and then you can decide here where you get notified. And then you would hit save, and now you're going to get notified whenever a job that you're interested in um, comes up. So that's really like a great way to find jobs and internships. Again, if you're looking like specifically for internships, you can come into this filter that we've already pulled up for you here. Oh, this is a little messed up because I have all of these filters set up. But now if I were to go to internships, well, apparently that's the only internship that's in my demo account. If we come to Christine's account here though, and we looked at internships, obviously we would see like a, a bunch more internships that are available and obviously a bunch more jobs. Um, you can also search by location and uh, part-time. I highly encourage you to come around here, come in here and just like save a bunch of different searches because it will pay off in the long run. Um, okay, I wanna quickly turn back to this deck here to talk about getting discovered. Um, employers on Handshake are very active and are constantly searching for new students. Um, as I mentioned a, a moment ago, if you create or if you complete your profile, you're five times more likely to be contacted by uh, a recruiter from an employer. Um, and that's what the, this messaging feature is. Um, I have provided all of these resources here for you to check out on your own time. Um, it's like, you know, a great way to make sure you get your profile completed and that you're really just being active in Handshake. And then just some other great uh, resources here, like 50 owned black, uh, 50 owned and led companies by black individuals. So that's a great thing to check out. Um, and now I want to talk more specifically about how you should cre create or complete your profile so that you're really standing out to employers and you're more likely to be contacted by a recruiter. So I've linked off to this blog post here. It's talking about the three must haves on your student profile. And those things are job interests, your cities and your roles. Like if there's, if there's anything you do on Handshake, it should definitely be updating these three things because it will make you so much more appealing to other or to employers. Um, you can also update your career interests. Um, that's done from your app too. Um, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Actually, let's, let's keep going here before we jump back to demo. So there's also a little bar at the top of your, or in your profile that shows you like how complete your profile is. Do your best to complete your profile. Um, you can do things like add a resume and other documents. You can add courses you've taken, put a profile picture, talk about the skills you have. It's always very beneficial. Um, and you know, you really want to update your interests so that employers can match you based on your interests and like what they're looking for in applicants. Um, and as I mentioned a moment ago, we also have these three super important uh, fields to complete in your profile, job type. That's like, is it full-time? Is it part-time? Is it an internship? Is it all of those? The locations that you want to work or currently are so you can you know really open that up to the entire United States if you wanted and then the type of role that you're looking for this is very important because it will quickly allow employers to find you based on the roles you're interested in um, oops now let's go back to um, we're back in my um, demo account here and I want to quickly show you how to update those settings. So if you come to your name in the top right corner, at least your initials, you can hit my profile and it will bring up your profile. Um, obviously I don't have a photo in here so I could make my profile much more complete by you know, adding a profile and adding some work experience. Um, this is that, that section we just saw on the slides where you can update your interests and you know, the cities you're interested in. So what you can do is just click the pencil in your job hunt, you can say I'm actively looking or, you know, make it tailor it to what you're actually looking for. Um, I'm just going to say I'm interested in all of these cities. I'll say San Francisco because that's where I'm closest to. Um, obviously, you could put a bunch more and then what type of roles. Uh, I want to be a CEO, so I'll just put that there. Industries, you can select from 
you know, dozens and dozens of industries. I'll just say a couple of random ones here. And now I'll save. And now you can see all of those fields have updated and I'm now five times more likely to be, be contacted by recruiters from, uh, from relevant companies, which is amazing. But you're also gonna want to, you know, edit the rest of your profile so that it really stands out and so that it gives employers something to look at um, should be very helpful. Um, okay, if we come back to this deck here, I know I'm getting a little short on time, so I wanna be conscious of that and really just talk about a couple other things you can do to stand out to employers. You can follow employers and mark that you're interested in the jobs that they have. So for example, Coming back to here, if I go to jobs and I look at employers, now I can see all the employers that are approved at my school and I'm really interested in 3M, so I'm gonna follow them. And I'm really interested in Abbott, so I'll follow them. So now you're just like letting employers know that you're interested and uh, you're gonna get more notifications based on when they uh, create jobs and post jobs and that sort of thing. Okay, getting connected. Um, we have this really great question and answer section on Handshake where it allows students to pose each other questions and then other students to answer those questions. I've linked off here to like your actual Student Oswego section of the, the Q&A so that you can just quickly click in here and see what people are saying. And then I also wanted to talk to you about peer messaging because it's a great way to prepare for interviews and like really make yourself stand out to employers. Um, because what you can do is see um, which of your, you know, colleagues at school have been hired at a company or worked at a company. And then you can actually send them a message if they have a public profile saying like, hey, what was it like to work at that company? Um, what's the culture like? And then you're that much more prepared when you actually have an interview, because you can say things like, oh, I've heard from some people that, you know, it's really great to work here because of A, B, and C, and it really just makes you stand out a lot more. Um, in order to be able to send messages to students, you need to have your privacy settings in your profile set to community so that other students can see you and you can see other students. So this is just the way that you can actually set that up. Um, and then other things you can do in Handshake, you get access to career fairs and, um, other uh, other great resources like interviews and career planning. Um, you can meet employers on campus or now I guess virtually depending off you're all virtual. Um, I'm gonna skip this quote because I'm pretty short on time here. Um, last thing I have this link to, if you click on this, it will take you directly to sign into Handshake at Student Oswego and you can get in there and update your profile. Um, and with that, I will turn it back over. Scott, thank you so much. That was extremely helpful and a great overview of Handshake. We did have a um, question come in the chat um, that I figured it might be best just to answer now because it's very Handshake related. Um, mm -hmm. Lena asked, does Handshake have a remote filter set up for positions as the pandemic continues? Is there a way to find remote internships specifically? So great question. And I just closed the page I wanted to show you, but we've been building that feature out and there's st it's still going to continue to get better but for right now there's a couple recommendations i have um let me share my screen again so the quickest way are you able to see my screen yep you're good oh perfect so the fastest way to search for a remote listing right now is just to come to the search bar and type in remote I don't think anything's gonna populate in my demo account here. Um, oh yeah, it is because we have this remote workers allowed. Um, so the fastest way to find remote listings is just type remote into the search bar. Um, another thing, Christine, that you could do is if you're seeing like when you're approving jobs or when you're looking through jobs, if you see that there's specific listings that are looking for remote workers, you can add a remote label to that job or that employer. And then when students 
use the um, all filters bubble here, if they scroll all the way down to labeled by your school, then there would be like a remote label here that they could use. This is just like a random job label. I don't think it will even show anything, but hopefully that's helpful. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. And then there was um, one more question that came through the chat. Sure. Is handshake for jobs out of college as well? Yeah, definitely. The 90, I mean, most employers who are looking for uh, employees on handshake are looking for students one to three years outside of Handshake, but we're seeing more and more that people are, or students are updating their profile and keeping it up to date, like the further they get outside of school. It's really interesting that question came up because today we had an all hands meeting at Handshake and we actually interviewed four students, one of which had been or has been out of school for about three years now. And she was saying that she really keeps her profile up to date and like checks in on Handshake regularly because um, there are still people contacting her and it's just like one more way to be able to find a job or an internship or anything like that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Those are the only two that I saw come in the Q&A that were handshake specific. Uh, uh, participants, if you have other questions for Scott, please feel free to throw them in the chat uh, and then we will get to them at the end. But okay, we are going to keep moving Thanks. on. I'll go ahead and have Val turn on your video and we will go ahead and hand it over to you to talk to us about career shift and all of the opportunities are the ways that Terrific. students search. Um, it doesn't seem to be allowing me quite yet. Perhaps that's something on your, there you go. Terrific, thank you so much. <laughs> all right, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Val Mata. I'm the co-owner, one co-owner of Career Shift. And I've been involved in this resource that I'm about to show you for um, since its inception. So I had the, the uh, exciting uh, couple years of having, uh, helping have, you know, kind of create the idea of career shift and then uh, was involved in the development and then rolled it out to the higher ed uh, market, which you are part of. So you, as well as many other schools and universities use career shift. Now you may be saying, oh my gosh, what is career shift? How is that different than anything else that I'm, um, you know, that I'm doing? So let me show you what I mean, because I want to make sure that you know what your career shift account actually looks like. So Handshake is bringing in postings for you and um, allow you to um, you know, present yourself in the most uh, professional way to employers that are coming into uh, handshake for you and that your school is, is saying is, are, are good, uh, could be good fits for you. Career shift kind of widens the net, if you will. It allows you to search, store, and organize the elements of your internet job search all in one place. So that being said, this is the first screen that you see once you, you create your career shift account. Every career shift page is divided into three areas. The far left-hand side is always gonna be your file folder system. It's what you're saving and organizing. So you're collecting all of that search data that you want to have searched and want to save. Um, career shift really believes that the career journey is ongoing. So to have a place where you can save all of your information in one spot for when you need it again, and research tells us two or three years down the road, then um, you know, you'll have that all handy and ready to, ready to rock and roll for yourself again. The middle area, the shaded area is the dashboard. So if I click on jobs, I'm working in the job aggregator. If I click on contacts, I'm working in the contact aggregator and there's subcategories under each of these. So that's how that middle piece um, operates. It's your call to action. And then the right hand side of your screen is always gonna be the action part of your page. We start you all off with a three minute video to kind of give you a quick overview on how to use career shift. But if you go to the bottom of the dashboard and click on help, you immediately see what's new in career shift where we have our tutorials. If you need us, you click on support and you immediately can email us, call us or sign up for your own live webinars where you can have live help using your career shift account. So career shift combines aggregators with organizational tools. In jobs, you're gonna search for jobs. The right-hand side of my screen just changed. 
The keyword box is required. It can handle up to 500 characters. If you run your mouse over these question marks that you find uh, around careership, those are kind of like the frequently asked questions that you might have on the pages that you're working. I can highlight my keywords and my search results. I can further filter by looking for things in the United States, Canada, UK countries, Australia, South America, Europe, Oceania, we just launched India. If I wanna so look solely for remote and work from home jobs, I can check this box. I can further filter by um, you know, different, different kinds of things, uh, 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 state and, and uh, uh, zip codes, uh, radiuses of zip codes, which is really nice for internships. You know, if you know you're going to be in your home uh, home neck of the woods uh, this this next summer. If I, I opened up uh, advanced search and I can filter for job types, source, where they came from, salary estimates, experience levels, how long ago something was posted. Career shift is extremely um, current. The oldest job posting you'll find on career shift is 30 days because we know how quickly um, job applicants are put together. Um, you can even check this box to filter for H-1B visa sponsorships, which is really um, a great way for international students. But if you click the search button, this is a typical search result, very easy on the eye. Um, you can drag and drop things that you wanna save over to your folder system. You can click save for later and you can actually add it into a folder of choice or create a new folder. Um, when you click on a folder, uh, click on the title of the job, it's going to open up from its original destination. So we're publicly posted, we're grabbing publicly posted jobs for you. Now, when you save a job, this is what a saved job details card looks like. You can rate it. You can move it through your process. You can delete, edit, move it, locate it with a Google map. You can share it. You might have a friend say, oh, this isn't for me, but this is for Joe. And you can, you can send that right to them. Um, not only do we aggregate job postings in CareerShift, we also aggregate contact information. So we're grabbing publicly posted profiles. So if I click find contacts right now, CareerShift note in the dashboard took me to the contacts piece. It automatically entered in that company name. And now I very quickly see the first 5,000 found contacts of people that have an affiliation with, um, with Lockheed Martin. So when you save a contact, which is the same way, either click save for later or drag and drop it over, this isn't a good example of the kind of information that you're privy to by using CareerShift. We have a name, a title, and uh, an email address, phone numbers. You can cross-reference LinkedIn. You can click on company details, move, edit, delete. You can see employment history with links to those entities, where people go to school, articles on the internet, so you can put together your talking points before you do any of the outreach. Now, if you draw your right of the right, you can link other things to this particular contact card that you have saved. Other maybe contacts, companies, jobs you've applied for, communications, calendar events, notes, even the documents that you use to apply to those positions. So in one place, you see how it's all organized. So in jobs, now what if I said, okay, I, I'm starting to look at jobs. Now I'm looking at a contact from Lockheed Martin. What else would be helpful? I'd like to know what else Lockheed Martin had a need for. I click on company jobs and I scroll down and I see into today, Lockheed Martin has 980 open postings in the United States alone. So how does this help you as a job seeker? Well, it helps you understand what Lockheed Martin calls their job titles. That's huge information for any job seeker. Number two, where do those opportunities lie? And last but not least, as a candidate, we always need to know how a company is hoping to expand and in what area so you can determine your fit and then decide to be proactive, knowing this might be a target company. So what do you do with target companies? Well, in career shift, under the word search results, you click save search. A little box opens up. And it asks you, what do you want to name this search? I'm going to name it Lockheed United States. I'm also going to check this box to send myself an email alert daily, twice daily, or weekly. I click save search coming to my smartphone and my email box once a week are the latest opportunities. But at any time when I'm in jobs, I can go to the subcategory save searches and all of my targeted job search strings will populate here. So I really think the greatest way to get started on CareerShift is to come up with the job searches that make sense for you and then go ahead and save those searches so you can be an efficient job seeker. You can do things quickly. 
So in jobs, you can search, manage, save your searches and always go back to your last search. But what do we know when we ask people, how did you land that job? What do they say to you? Most likely they're gonna say, I got the job because I found so-and-so. So-and-so helped me get my resume on top of a pile. So how do you do that in career shift? You go to contacts. In this case, I might wanna just put Oswego down under school attendant, a quick click of the search button, and I'm always gonna get great contact opportunities. Um, I had saved uh, Mr. Lap Lane earlier, and this is the kind of information that you have on your alumni here at Oswego. Now let's do one more search because I think it's important for you to know in terms of internships, how this might help you. Let's say that you are extremely interested in the arts and museums and art galleries are your cup of tea. And you uh, have an, an aunt that um, is living in Chicago and, she ha and you, have, you have a place to stay. And more importantly, you wanna look for curators of museums and art galleries in Chicago. A quick click of the search button and CareerShift makes it really easy for you to find people to connect with. And of course you can save them, um, roll them over and I can, you can always save your searches the same way. So under contacts, you can search, manage, save your searches, go to your last search, import, and you can always export your saved contacts into an Excel spreadsheet. Now, sometimes don't we just wanna to put together target companies? So maybe I just want to go back to that very same example. You were looking for um, museums and art galleries, and you wanted to find uh, everything in, um, in New York City for um, museums and art galleries. A quick, you can, now you can do advanced searches too, you know, minimum and maximum yearly revenues, sizes, whether they're ranked, all those good things. You, if you want to get granular, really specific, you can use SIC codes or NI. ICS codes, but a quick click of the search button and you're going to see really quickly what a wonderful exploration tool for you. And again, these same good links are right here. So in the real value proposition of using career shift is you can start at any one place and get the rest of the information. You can upload your documents. You can send communications. And when you send a communication, uh, you will always have a record of what you sent to whom and when, which is really quite nice. And you can connect other things there as well. Not only is the record stored in your folder system of choice, it's also stored on your calendar. It's stored on your calendar when you, when you sent it and when you wanted to be reminded. And you can move these away, around, you can edit them, you can send yourself reminders. So CareerShift will help you stay on track. Under settings, you can change your personal information if you need to, but please don't forget that we are here to assist you. So you can reach out to us at any time. That kind of concludes what I anticipated being able to um, share with you today. Career shift is considered the proactive piece to the job search. You wanna make sure that you're, you're doing your best to be a, a proactive job seeker. You know what I found in my long experience? is that companies like uh, job seekers, they like candidates that have singled them out. They want, they want you to target them. So thanks for your time. And I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. Awesome, thank you so much, Val. So much uh, really important information there. I personally love that you can add as many folders and safe searches as you want. <laughs> then you can really be job searching with um, maybe not a million, but definitely more than one um, filters or categories with employers and opportunities. And I think that's really important that students are open-minded about those opportunities in different locations or different companies, industries, that type of thing. So that's really important. You know, Christine, you make a really valid point. We all know the big companies or the, the, the companies that come to mind when we begin to think about what we want to do with our life, or at least, you know, our first stop on our career journey. But what career shift can do for you is really open up your eyes to the wealth of opportunity that we have right at our fingertips. So thank you. Yes, great point. I love the companies. I always look through those because I think it can be a great way to target, um, you know, employers and whatnot. If you're specific to an area and your geographic location is your non-negotiable, then um, definitely looking at the companies and trying to, you know, go about job searching that way. So thank you so much. I don't see any questions. 
um, in the chat or with the Q and A just quite yet. So if anyone has any questions for Vale, go ahead and throw them in the chat or the Q and A, and we'll get to those at the end. Um, I will go ahead and have you um, stop sharing your screen and I'll go ahead and turn it over to Sarah. Thank you so much, Val. I appreciate oh, it. This is just so much amazing information that I'm, I'm jealous that I didn't have such fantastic resources when I was at university, but um, I'll try and move past that to share some awesome information about LinkedIn as well. Um, I would say all of these tools go beautifully in tandem. Um, a great example of that is the fact that we run at LinkedIn, a really awesome program called the Student Champions Program. Um, it's an opportunity to become an on-campus advocate for LinkedIn Learning and brings out a lot of cool uh, resources on the other side, things like a reference and recommendation from LinkedIn, as well as some really interactive sessions to build out your online portfolio. We post that through Handshake. So look out for that in September. Um, it's an internship opportunity that you would be able to apply for while you're still at Oswego. So that would be not for recent grads, but that would be while you're still there. Um, so some, some fantastic opportunities for some little cross-disciplinary action there. Um, I'm going to share a few tips and tricks around LinkedIn. Um, and I think that first thing to mention is that this is a great platform to start getting involved on now. And also just to keep up to date on. Um, we are constantly updating our platform and making tweaks and bringing in new features. So try and keep in the loop as much as you can. Um, and I'll be chatting a little bit more about LinkedIn Learning here as well as we go. Um, my role is as a customer success manager for LinkedIn Learning specifically with us as we go is to help you all get the most value out of the platform as possible. So thinking through what sorts of courses you can take, which sorts of audiences are gonna make the most sense on the platform and how you'll be able to really showcase the skills that you get from LinkedIn Learning on top of all of the fantastic uh, skills and, and knowledge you're gaining in your degree. This is just another step to be able to add to that. Um, so always here to help on that front. And today I'm shifting a little bit and talking about the job search strategy on LinkedIn itself. Um, a few stats to think about sort of top of mind would be just all of the content that is available on LinkedIn and kind of comes, you know, right in lockstep with, with whenever you think of job search and job networking, LinkedIn hopefully comes to mind. Um, we now have over 722 million members in over 200 countries and territories. And jobs wise, we have more than 14 million active job listings right now. So that's about 10 million different employers with seven and a half million jobs per month. So about three people are hired every single minute on LinkedIn, which by my calculations is around over, over 100 since we started the webinar. So just think of all those people that are getting jobs that they're, they're out there and it's just about setting yourself up to be the absolute best qualified candidate you can and showing off your online presence in a way that will set you up for success. So if you weren't able to attend the sessions we did last week, um, do definitely go back and take a look at the recordings on what to do on your LinkedIn profile, how to make it appealing, and making sure that you are building out your online presence in a smart and tactical way. So a few things to think about before you start the search, because I know overall you can dive in and start searching for jobs and just take the first opportunity that comes out. But just with the vast amount of job listings that there are on the platform, I'd love to just give you a few things to think about in terms of what, what your identification of the right company and the right role are. So narrow down the sorts of opportunities that you're looking for first by thinking through these pieces. Now, location is one item that is probably a little bit more fluid right now. Um, I don't know about everyone else on the call, but um, LinkedIn has certainly upped its remote options a lot. And um, we have on, on the platform, we have four times an increase in four times more remote opportunities now than we did last year. So it's obviously a trend. Um, so location is one element, but of course not maybe the most important one. It'll help you to find the different sorts of uh, um, opportunities that you are actually interested in applying to. If you consider first the industry and the size of company you're interested in. Um, I've worked for you know, 15,000 employee companies like LinkedIn and the Department of Education in New York. And then I've worked for a three person company and startups of 80 people companies. So hugely different in terms of the sorts of company you're looking to work for. Start considering that in your process and, and why that would appeal to you. The more you can speak to why you're applying, exactly as Val was saying, the more you know, I want to apply to this company for this specific reason, the more likely you are going to be a good fit for that company and they'll see that. Thinking through development style is something that I never thought of until you know a few years ago. So I always thought, great, I'm just gonna get a job and hope that I learn on the job and figure it out. Uh, 
but now I think a lot more about programmatic training. So what's, what sort of scenarios and structures are in place to help me grow as a professional, especially when you're a recent grad? It's such an important element. Is someone investing in your professional development and how? Um, of course, the other pieces around, well, maybe not so much travel right now, but thinking around how much money you're expecting to earn, what your compensation is going to look like, thinking about the day-to-day -day things you're going to be doing and how much of your work-life balance you need to consider. Those are all elements of finding the right opportunity before you start applying for them. It's just some things to take away to consider as you go through this process. You don't necessarily have to apply to every single job that pops out there for you. Super important to start out by tapping into your network. Um, you're four times more likely to get hired if you have a connection at the company. So we still really, really value referrals within any kind of hiring practices. So something to think about right now, make a great impression on the people that you're connecting with in your network and then stay in touch with them. Those are important. So be professional in every single scenario of your life right now, whether that's with your classmates, whether that's with your professors or teaching assistants that can help you in the future, specifically alumni. You have a fantastic way to connect with alumni straight on LinkedIn from your SUNY Oswego page, which we talked about last week. And then of course your friends and family. And if you haven't started tapping into your network and connecting with those people, make a list of 20 people today that you wanna connect with and then commit to reaching out to those people in the next 24 to 48 hours. Give yourself a goal to start building your network because that is gonna be the number one best way to create those job opportunities. That's the way that we structure all of our focus in terms of connecting people to greater economic opportunity. And then think about the opportunities themselves. So finding opportunities are a few different things to consider. First off, spread the word. Tell every single person that you know that you're looking for a job. That will start getting people's wheels spinning. They'll start thinking of you as opportunities come up. They talk to this person or that person that happens to have a company that's hiring or know someone else that's hiring. Always going to help get the word out. Then, of course, use your career center. You have such a tapped in and phenomenal amount of career resources at Oswego. Use the fantastic people that are setting up this amazing program. Set up appointments with the amazing resources. Get a career counseling session scheduled in. Look at the web page. Go back and view any recordings you haven't seen in sessions that you haven't done yet. They're all going to set you up for success. There's super valuable information being shared there. And then lastly, let's get into that online search. Get into LinkedIn. Get onto the other amazing platforms that we talked about here in Career Shift and Handshake all of those tools that you have access to, you won't have access to them forever and ever. So especially while you're a uh, student there, make sure you're starting to set up your search successfully. All right, so how do we do that? I'm gonna get into the nuts and bolts a little bit, but it's super intuitive and you'll find, you'll be able to come back to this and check through it when you get in later. When you go into LinkedIn, the jobs tab is where you'll first focus. So you'll see jobs that you've saved or that you're interested in. And from there, you can create, you can manage alerts on any of the opportunities that you've starred. You can either do that on desktop or you can do that in the LinkedIn app on the jobs tab. So right from that job space, you'll see at the top, you have all of my jobs that you've saved. You'll see things like your job alerts and skills assessments, which are a fantastic way to start setting yourself apart. Skills assessments are, are pretty high level, so you have to have a good amount of knowledge around them. Make sure that you're prepping for those different skills assessments, things like Excel, um, other any kind of programming tools if you have a good amount of knowledge on them it's worth taking a skills assessment um, but you won't have endless opportunities to retake it so do make sure that you're you're making sure you're prepared for them but under the more tab that little drop down is where you'll find things like interview prep which is fantastic resources for commonly asked questions which you can drill down by industry we have a resume builder that'll help you build out your own resume if you haven't already got one and then under application settings is where you'll be able to upload your resume so you can apply quickly. That looks like this. If you click into that job application settings, it'll make your applications faster. And the reason I say that that's useful is because if you apply within the first 10 minutes of receiving a relevant job application, a job notification, you increase your chances of hearing back by four times. So we always think through, well, I wanna make sure my cover letter is word perfect and I wanna make sure my resume looks absolutely ideal. But sometimes actually, uh, speed is more important than quality in an application. You're proving yourself a good fit. And then as soon as you get in front of those people by being quick to get there, then you'll have a good, uh, hopefully you'll have, a, have the chance to make a great impression. So within this space, once you jump into the job application settings, you'll be able to manage all your resumes. You can upload the resume specifically. 
And then later, if you do a quick apply, you'll be able to just send that exact resume directly into the job application. Now you can always change it later. So if you have a couple different resumes, one's pretty standard, but then you have a couple that are tweaked for very specific scenarios, you can always change the one during your application process that you include. So don't worry about it being uncustomizable. It's a great way to just speed up your process and also take a bit of the lift off of where do I save this? Where is this? And all the extra ID information that you can just pop in automatically should help. And then we have a really fantastic new tool which lets others know that you're open to opportunities. So if you mark yourself as open to work, you're letting recruiters know that you're looking for job opportunities. And we have a lot of fantastic data around this since we launched it last year in the middle of COVID when it was a scary time to be looking for a job. Um, members with an open to work photo frame on average receive 40% more emails from recruiters. They're 20% more likely to receive messages from the LinkedIn community. So if you turn on open to work on your LinkedIn profile, you're also twice as likely to get a recruiter message. It's a really clear cut way of slimming it down for recruiters, making it way easier and taking the guesswork out of all of those messages that you get saying, not sure if you're open to this opportunity. So it's certainly worth doing that. Um, if you do specify the kind, kinds of job opportunities that you're interested in, and then also your preferred location, we can help uh, your profile specifically show up in search results when recruiters look for suitable job candidates. So it's all algorithmic. We have a lot of tools that help with this. And the more you build out your information, the better off you're gonna be in terms of getting those really relevant opportunities reach out to you. If you wanna do this, you'll just click on the me icon in the top of your LinkedIn homepage. And then from there, you can go into view profile and add profile section. And in the info section, you'll see this little open to. And from there, you can choose that you're looking to find a job. You'll be able to add either add that little ring, which is obviously a really clear option, or let's say later down the line, you've got a job, but you are looking for a new opportunity. You can also turn on the option that you're open to opportunities. It won't show up anywhere except for on recruiter pages. And recruiters at your company won't see that. As much as possible, we hide that from your specific company recruiters so that it's not super obvious you're looking for a different job. And then I'd love to send you to this fantastic LinkedIn learning course that will help you out on all these steps. So it's pretty straightforward in terms of starring your um, job saves, your interested uh, industries, the things that you're looking for. Everything you need to know is right there on the platform, um, but it can be challenging to figure out where to start. We have a really excellent course that we've just updated recently in COVID times uh, called Job Hunting for College Grads. This QR code is a link straight to your login to LinkedIn Learning. So if you do have um, a chance, go ahead and hover over that with your camera and it'll send you over to the LinkedIn Learning activation page if you haven't already activated. The app is really great. You will need to activate for the first time on your browser on your phone or on a desktop, um, but then you can always go into the app on your phone afterwards. So definitely recommend taking a look at this one. This instructor is fantastic and engaging. Lots of the tips I shared today are covered in that same course and tons more for looking for the right opportunities. Um, things like interviewing practices, lots of brilliant um, content on LinkedIn Learning to help you through that process. I'd love to answer any questions, but I'm sure people have questions for all of our presenters today, but any specific to LinkedIn, if you want to start there, totally up to you. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was great. Um, all right. Um, looking at the Q&A, Amber has a question about accessing the resume builder. Oops, sorry. Like a where, where to access think, the resume builder? I think where she can access it is the question. Yeah, so that's from that same tab in that more drop down. And um, if you go into, and it should be available, if it's not available for you, it's possible that it's a pro uh, premium subscription, which I thought that you all had access to. Um, but if you don't see that second drop down in the more tab, if it doesn't show resume builder, then it might, might be a tool that you don't have access to unless you're a premium user.